right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Neil Thubron, who is in Buckinghamshire in the UK. How are you doing, Neil? I'm good, thanks, John. Yeah, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. And Neil's an executive coach, motivational speaker, and extreme fitness challenger. And if you read all the stuff that he has done from a fitness and fitness challenge point of view, it's, uh, it's exhausting just reading them, to be perfectly honest. Uh, <laughs> I think you need a rest after that. Uh, and today we're going to talk about developing great leaders. And Neil, you're also the um, author of the book, You Can... You can, you can achieve any big goal using the 7P formula for success. Okay, so let's start off a moment, maybe a definition, because when you say like developing great leaders, what are the characteristics of a great leader? Oh, that's a, that's a big question, actually. And there are several and, and uh, uh, yeah, many ways of describing that. Um, Characteristics of a great leader, and so I have also have a podcast and, and YouTube where we look at leadership and un uncovering clues of leadership called the Leadership Detectives. And um, there are some common themes come through about developing great, about great leaders. Uh, so things like being great listeners, being uh, understanding and empathetic to their employees, like um, being really clear on what you want from people, giving them clear feedback, uh, and um, being prepared to receive feedback as well. We did a really interesting interview with some millennials, and one of the key things for them was they wanted to know when they were doing a good job, but they also wanted to feel valued by being able to share their feedback and feel like they were contributing to the direction of the business or the strategy or the thinking in the business. So those are a few, there are, there are many, but those yeah. are a few just to start us off. Yeah. So on the, on the communication one, like I, I totally agree with you. And I think uh, sometimes you get people who are in leadership positions who end up adopting like one communication style for everybody. Right. And let's face it. I mean, if you're going to be a leader, you have to, yes, you may have a broadcast communication style, but then you also need to look at who are the who are the individuals that you're interacting with and how they want to be or how it's more effective to communicate with different styles of people. Yeah, 100 percent. You, you, you need to be effective at communicating. You definitely need multiple ways of doing it. Uh, you need like like I mean, I've been in sales most of my career. You, you don't sell to everybody in the same way. So you have to engage with people in the method they like. And, and we, the key thing that most leaders forget, actually, is that communication is not just one way. Communication is two ways. So you, you have to create that forum and that methodology for your people to communicate with you in a safe environment. Right. And that could be verbal, that could be email, that could be... Yeah, but there are so... And at the moment, with the pandemic, of course, there is so much more need for communication... And there are so many methods available for communication through WhatsApp, Zoom, mm -hmm. emails, ev everything that's, you know, that's out there at the moment. So you're really, really important is to have different methods of communication. Yeah. And I, and I think, and obviously during the pandemic, it's even more important to be um, consistent with communication, maybe even to surprise people with communication, because it's very easy for people to feel disconnected from the business and yeah you maybe as a leader there's a lot going on and you have a lot of pressures on you and everything but you have to think about how that filters down yeah and it's interesting actually because i do a lot of coaching with leaders and, and one of their biggest worries at the start of the pandemic for those that weren't used to having employees working at home mm -hmm. was yeah. how do i know what they're doing how do i know that they're working they were really worried about, especially people who are managing sales guys, how do I know they're really working and they're really get doing what I need them to do? And so the key thing there, and, and, and when you're not in the office seeing people all the time, is you've got to have regular communication, but have some structure around it too. So have some structure around why you're communicating and everyone needs to know what does good look like? I use that yeah. term a lot. What does good look like? And if they know what good looks like, and then you're asking them regularly, are you delivering on what I've 
articulated good looks like that's really important it's in, when you're working remotely yeah and i think uh, I, and i and i agree with you and i think uh, one of the things that maybe a lot of leaders overlooked is setting proper expectations for when people are working virtually maybe you've you've migrated your business or you've had to have you know you have to have people working virtually but setting expectations but also then i think actually talking to people talking to your managers talking to everybody else because not everybody's circumstance is the same anymore when they're virtual right maybe yeah. you have to be a little bit more flexible with with working hours or 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 whatever but it, unless you actually set expectations and have those conversations you're never going to know no so you, so you're right yeah and it comes back to the different methods of communication as well so you have to understand people's circumstances so you know people who've got young kids and they're having to do homeschooling for instance with teenagers you know that's mm -hmm. challenging and you've got to understand that um dynamic and allow people, but the, the best way to find out what, what do people need is to ask them, don't assume, it's to just ask them, what's the best way of us communicating and managing this during this time? Yeah, and I think this probably, you know, especially in the early stage of this, I think probably too much energy was put in just trying to recreate, uh, for those who were moving from physical settings, to just yeah. recreate the physical setting virtually instead of going, well, no, this is an opportunity to look at things differently. And it may not be possible to replicate exactly what you want. And as you say, unless you really start to dig in and understand, um, you know, you're not going to, and you're going to end up probably in a very frustrating situation. Yeah, and I've seen uh, with the, the companies I work with, I've seen founders and owners during the first two or three months really struggling to work out how they mm -hmm. should communicate, how they should talk. And I've seen others go, you know, this is the most, I'm so much more efficient working at home now because I'm not getting constantly interrupted by people walking past my desk. Yeah. You know, when a meeting on Zoom or on Teams finishes, it finishes and I can move on to the next thing. You know, we're not hanging around talking about coffee machines and walking. But and so... I was co coaching someone this morning. He said, you know, I'm just so much more productive and efficient working at home. And I know he's uh, the founder of the company and he's, he's adjusted now, but for the first two or three months, he struggled to work out how do I communicate with my whole business and my whole team. By the way, now they're doing a brilliant job of it. They really learned how to do it well. Yeah, and it's interesting because, I mean, we as a company actually went virt largely virtual about six years ago, strategically, as uh, we did right. it uh, deliberately. And... Um, and it's and we found discovered very quickly that you can actually be more productive and more efficient. And I come and I all call myself the reform smoker of uh, of remote working because back yeah. in the day when I ran some companies, I couldn't stand people working yeah. working from home. But then you know with the technology and with the way work has developed and etc. And if you set it up properly, it, it can be absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah. So what are some other things that maybe people are looking for from their leaders, particularly at challenging yeah. times like this? So communication is one thing. What's yeah. another thing people so are there's, desperately there's two seeing? things I'd really like to mention that are really key. The first one is a vision. Mm -hmm. Have a compelling vision and purpose for where you are, you are taking your team. Now, I say your team because it's not just the business owner that has to have a vision. Every single department, every single leader should, should have a vision for how, and this is a great time of year to do it. You know, we're at the end of the year, as you're going into the new year, spend some time just sitting with a blank pad and thinking about what, what, where do I want to be at the end of 2021? What does my vision look like? What's my, how are we going to grow as a team? How are we going to grow as individuals? And that kind of leads to the second point, actually, which is about enabling growth and encouraging growth within your whole team and your whole business. Because that, that can easily be forgotten in these times when we've mm. been you know, busy doing execution type stuff. But there has been a fab opportunity while people are sitting in front of their screens to grow as well. Yeah. So those are two really important things that leaders need to be considering is what's my vision? Where do I want to be taking this? What's our purpose? Why are we doing this? And the second one is about growth, enabling growth and enabling people to be better and more than they were 12 months before. 
Yeah, and and I think uh, you you raise an excellent point there on on vision because uh, you know maybe the vision has evolved now because of the pandemic or the future mm. whatever, but you can't assume that people understand that that you have to articulate that and and maybe remind people maybe people have even forgotten what the original vision was, and I do think that. Uh, that you have to constantly remind people in good ways about what it is. And if it's evolved or changed, you know, obviously update them. Uh, 100%. And actually, I find that lead, some leaders, some senior leaders feel a bit, I don't know, sycophantic, keep, keep going over their vision and they keep saying mm -hmm. that. But actually, your people like to hear it. They yeah. like to hear you talking consistently about your vision. Don't just do it once at the beginning of the year in the kickoff constantly be talking about where you want to go where your vision is because that's what inspires you know it, it, it isn't by chance that companies like tesla are mm. the companies that most people want to work for it's because they have an inspiring vision and and that can be at every level in the organization yeah and i think uh, and i think uh people if they don't hear the vision restated often enough or they don't hear it articulated or updated or whatever they kind of fill in the gaps themselves or they assume that maybe there are things happening that they don't know about and and that leads to a yeah, little bit no. of instability or uncertainty among the employees yeah really really good point and I, I, there's a great story i i um tell when i'm talking about this it was when uh, john f kennedy visited nasa before the moon launch and he he went and talked to a janitor and he said to the janitor what are you doing and he said, I'm getting a man on the moon. And if that wow. vision filters down throughout the whole organization, everybody is part of that journey. And I think that's a great story. No, it's a fantastic story. And I think it's a great challenge to, to leaders out there to how, if you went around your company or if somebody in honesty went around your company and asked everybody what their job was, would they say, well, uh, my job is I, I'm, I just do fulfillment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I yeah. ship stuff or whatever, or would, as you say, would they, would they state, you know, the overall purpose of the company? And, and you know what is fascinating during the beginning of the pandemic, I saw some leaders really turn on their just simple companies that were doing simple things. So there was a, I heard a truck driver being interviewed or a lorry driver in the UK, mm -hmm. but a truck driver uh, yeah. being interviewed and, uh, you know, if you'd asked him what his job was before the pandemic, before lockdown, he'd have said, I drive stuff around. What he said was, when he was interviewed, he says, I'm feeding the nation. And I right. thought, wow, isn't that yeah. brilliant? And he's been doing the same job, but now it meant something. Yeah, and I think that's fantastic. And, and uh, you know, you touched on something there that I just want to, to focus in on for a moment, because I do think sometimes we underestimate what our contribution to work or the world is and, and what we're doing. And I think it's good to rediscover that. And if that's one positive to come out of this horrific pandemic, yeah. then that's a good thing too. But yeah. that's, a, that's a fantastic example. And I think it would help people with their own kind of self-esteem and like belief if they realize, you know, if they looked at their jobs in that way and they realize what a contribution they're actually making. Correct. And, and, and leaders can help with that. Mm -hmm. Leaders can help by, by making their employees understand the value they are delivering, not just to the company, but to the end user of the product of the company or the service of the company. And, and you know, if a bit of time spent on that make a big difference to the energy and motivation throughout the organization. Yeah. And I like also what you said about growth. Uh, I mean, there's probably never, a, you're probably never going to get a better opportunity than this to, to invest in yourself and in your own mm. personal growth. Um, so maybe you, you know, you could skip a couple of the binge sessions on Netflix yeah. and actually invest in, in, in doing yeah. some professional development, uh, development yourself. But I also think from a leader point of view, I think encouraging people to invest in themselves, because sometimes I feel like people sit back and they're waiting for the company or their manager to, yeah. to invest in them rather than realizing that nobody cares, nobody cares more about you than yourself. Yeah, people do need to take responsibility. And you know, a big part of what I do when I'm coaching is helping mm. people do that because people tend to look outside of themselves for answers, whereas nearly all the answers are inside sure. yourself. 
Um, and you're, at the moment, there is so much technology out there with all of the online academies that you can sign up for with the YouTube channels and all the podcasts. You can learn so much. And I bet you a question, I, in fact, I guarantee you a question that's going to come up in interviews as we go into 2021 will be, how did you develop yourself during furlough? Or how did mm. you develop yourself when you were at home? And those people who said I developed myself by sitting around watching Netflix, <laughs> I'm not probably going to get to the top of the list of, uh, uh, on, the, on the employee list. Yeah, and I think because uh, it's also an important part of, of leadership, because I think sometimes people think, you know, you need to be in a leadership position to be a leader. But you're, you know, you're in the leadership position of your own life and your own career, too. So I think uh, demonstrate and, and I think that's a great point you make about interviews. I think demonstrating that you are you take control of your own life, that you lead yourself, that you invest in yourself. I mean, that's what I'd love to see in, in, in anybody I was interviewing. Yeah, 100 percent. And, and, you know, and there was a great opportunity to do that. And there still is, actually. So anyone mm -hmm. listening to this, you know, don't, don't waste time. There's still an opportunity as we go through lockdown to invest in yourself and learn new skills. Yeah. And I love like the overall theme of what you said today from a leadership point of view is, is really clarity. And I think that's what people crave more than anything, because let's face it. I mean, we live in a time of, of uncertainty right now and clarity is something unfortunately that's lacking in, in, in most areas. Uh, there's so many conflicting opinions and all of this that I think that, one of the greatest things you can deliver as a leader is clarity to your people. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, I'm not sure I said the word clarity, so thank you for picking that up because it is a really, really key point is it, people do not want to hear waffle or uh, you know, soft speak at the moment. They want them to, to know the facts. They want to know what they need to do. They want to know the position of the company. They want to know, um, what they need to do next to make things better or you know what's the company so straight talk is really important at the moment and so clarity over vision clarity over um, what good looks like over objectives um so yeah really 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 good point yeah i think that that point about what does good look like because i think sometimes and we can all look back through our careers and, and look back at frustrating times when you know a, a manager or something said no no that's not what I wanted and then you were like but you never really explained to me what you wanted this is what I thought you wanted and so that again that piece of explaining what good looks like I think we assume yeah. too often that people understand what we're looking for correct and and by the way that's two ways as well so it's really you know people I coach one of the first I say to them does you do you know what your boss wants from you do mm -hmm. you know what good looks like to him so you, yeah. you can always ask the question upwards. You don't have to wait to be told. Yeah, and I, lo and I love that you will, will, will end on that piece, I think, today, because that's another one I think that's so critical and people overlook, and that's the whole concept of managing upwards, right? And especially when people get put into management positions, they think it's all about managing downwards. But managing upwards is probably one of the greatest skills you can develop, and it'll save you a lot of pain in the long run, as you say, if you understand from your manager's point of view what good looks like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a whole another episode on how you manage upwards for sure. Yeah, maybe you come back sometime in the future and we'll talk about managing upwards because I do think it's a it's a really overlooked skill. And when people develop it, suddenly their lives become a lot better. Their their professional lives become a lot right. better, yeah. and, and they always uh, and they kind of end up going, "Wow, I wish I'd have known this sooner." So yeah, especially around task management, time management, stuff like that. If you get upward management right, your life just suddenly eases. Yeah. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Neil. All of Neil's information will be below this uh, video here. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh, wow. OK. Um, <laughs> so, so I work with lots of different companies, uh, helping develop their leadership teams, their sales organizations. Um, I have a YouTube channel and podcast, which is the Leadership Detectives. Um, and I do a lot of motivational speaking based around my extreme sports activities. And I also have a long distance running company where we organize long distance running events as well. So a real spread of stuff. I, just, I do stuff I love now, which is uh, mm. what I really enjoy. Yeah, which is, which is fantastic. And I think that's obviously a good, good thing for everyone to aspire to. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.